Welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and today I have a review and comparison of the Lanbatu 3088. You probably recognize this as the egregiously, shamelessly uh, copied work of the Platinum Curados. Uh, there is uh, well, there is nothing original to this pen, but you're probably going to see several people review it here. I think as it went up on eBay and on AliExpress and a few other places, uh, I was not the only one who went, oh, you got to be kidding me. I don't mind a pen that uh, is a variation on a theme, even that is an, an homage, or is a, a, a real improvement and marketed uh Honestly, as we like their pen, we think we can do it better. But that's not what this is. Now, I do know there are a few sellers that they have some things that they're saying, oh, we improved it here and we improved it there. But first off, not improvements. And secondly, shameless, shameless copy. I'm going to tell you right here at the very beginning, don't go buy this pen, <laughs> okay? Don't go buy this pen. Uh, but I am going to show you what they did and how well and badly they did it. And I'm going to compare it to the pen that it tries to copy, and that is the Platinum Curados. Those people deserve credit for the engineering they did. These people just reverse engineered and then really phoned it in. And, uh, then later in the week, I'm going to do a real review of the Platinum Curados. In that review, I'm not going to reference this pen. Uh, I want to get this out of the way in case this is something you've noticed on the internet lately, and then do a proper review of a proper pen. Okay, that, does that already tell you what I think? Maybe, but it doesn't tell you everything. How about we flip the camera, take a closer look at these pins, and then, then you'll find out what I think. Okay, so I think even just having the pins sitting there, you already see an incredible similarity and a few key differences with this pen. Uh, the blue is the Curados. I, that's my favorite color, if you hadn't figured that out already. And uh, when you look over this pen, I think you can see uh, some platinum DNA here. The, the plastics are very similar to, say, the Profante. Uh, you see just some nib style here that is very similar, even though it's a different size, to some of their other pens. You start to see just their, their DNA. And it is an excellently made pen. Now, it has its, its uh, proponents and its opponents, but I think that it actually is a, a good pen. I wasn't sure, actually, for a while whether or not I would like this pen when it first was released. Uh, there was a flurry of people running to this pen and reviewing this pen and talking about the pen, and some liked it and some didn't. And uh, I just kind of held off a little too long. And by the time I thought, you know, I think I'd like to try that, well, then... All the blue and the medium point versions of the pen were sold out everywhere I looked, and it took a very long time before just the right combination of what I wanted seemed to be back in stock, or maybe it was coming back in small numbers and it was uh, I just wasn't fast enough, but it took me forever to get what you would think would be a very simple combination of a blue medium point, but uh, apparently I'm not the only one who wanted one of those. Anyway, uh, I've come to really like this pen. Now, I'm going to do, again, a proper review later on, so I'll tell you the things I like and that I don't like that are specific, especially to the real thing in that particular video. But it is a plastic-bodied pen with a steel clip. It connects in sort of a, a unique way with uh, two little notches there and there, and it slides into this before you snap those on, and then that all holds in place. Really good uh, steel, kind of a spring steel clip. Uh, you may be familiar with the mechanism. When you press the long knock, you'll notice it's not a, a short knock. It's pretty long, but you know, it's still a one-handed uh, knock and still very handy. It doesn't bother me a bit. Uh, you will notice the old fish mouth. See there? Bloop, bloop, bloop. Inside that is the housing allowing the nib to retract and then stay wet. And it does a very good job. I mean, just looking at it, you might not think that would provide quite enough seal, but this pin has never 
dried out on me at all. So I've been very pleased with it. Uh, you'll notice, of course, it has this little uh, lever action going on there. That's so the door has room for the hinge to come down and open. Kind of an odd design, but you know, that was the engineering that was necessary to make this pin work the way it does. Now they could have just copied another uh, clickable pin, right? They could have just done what Lanbatu did and just, just robbed a design. But I really appreciate that Platinum put the talents of their engineers to something other than the ability to Xerox. I think that's awesome. Copy and paste is not engineering. So Platinum did the hard work of coming up with a completely different mechanism and it works. It's a little bit more complicated, I think, than the pilot system. But as I said, it works and you can use a cartridge or a converter in this pin. Again, I'll break this down and uh, and review the pen properly in its own right. But I wanted you to at least see this much of the mechanism. I want you to note some things. Notice how well this metal is uh, machined and polished. Notice the material thickness and just the general overall quality that's visible even just on the camera. Notice that because that's important here in a second. This cartridge, or excuse me, converter did not come with the pin. I did have to pay for a converter, uh, but uh, I did have an extra lying around. So it does again take both cartridge and converter. It's fairly light, but not as light as something else I know. And then it just is a, a well-made pin. Those threads are smooth. You'll notice they're wide and smooth, but they are good and solid and tight at the same time. Just a well done, well engineered, even if it's not your thing, even if you find some flaws to your own liking, it's a well engineered pen. So remember that, okay? Remember that. And then if you wanna know more about that, uh, watch that video later on. This is the Lanbatu 308 Eight, and it looks like it is simply the same pen, but in clear acrylic. But that, my friends, is not true. Now you can still see a fish mouth in there, can you not? It also has the blub blub that you see, but it is not quite the same. It has a very similar steel nib. And this one is in a fine, that again was a medium. So when we do the writing test, you will notice some difference that's natural there, but uh, there's more than that. And a, a plastic feed. And of course I got the clear in this one, particularly because I wanted to be able to see every uh, feature and wart in this pen. And there are some. The clip looks identical uh, at first glance. There are some differences. It's uh, done a bit tighter. The plastic is weaker. I went to remove this to see if it was as removable as that because it looks like it ought to be. And this already started to uh, weaken. And uh, I think it's already on borrowed time, this, this little... Uh, groove that the clip goes into because it it just was not well it was cheap what can i say it was just it was too cheap that plastic as far as the mechanism i want you to hear something i'm going to uh, take this off camera for a second and get closer to the microphone and see if you can hear a difference first will be the lambatu okay hear that especially hear that that noise there. So just so you can see what's going on as I do that, I'll do it one more time. Okay, now here is the platinum. And not necessarily quieter, coming to the microphone. You see, there's a difference. Uh, there is a, a smoothness to this one that is not present. Uh, this does kind of have a, a snick snick and uh, more of a quality snick snick. This one has, some of the sounds are familiar, but there is just a grittiness to this pen that is not present. And one of the reasons you can see right through here, you'll see a little piece of, 
of brass there. And uh, do you see that notch inside the metal sleeve? I guess, even though it's clear, I could just remove a layer. And this is just not well uh, machined, polished, or anything at all. And did you notice that it just, it just slipped out of its groove? I have had a constant problem with that. Uh, it either wants to come out this way when it should not. That's only happened when I have uh, the barrel off. Uh, or worse, when reassembling the pin, I've had it go a little too far in, not even through my own fault, just because it came out of its it came out of its groove, and then the spring gets stuck down here, and it is a pain to get that spring back where it belongs. You actually have to, against your own better judgment, or at least mine, you have to lower that door and poke something up through to push the spring back, or uh, your pin is just completely disabled. So not cool not cool and it is because it's not misuse it is because this is not machined well enough and this metal is so thin on this sleeve right here that and weak that this can easily get out of its groove in either wrong direction so you know you get what you pays for right and uh in this particular case uh, you might think that this is too high at nearly 10 times the price of this, but uh, you're, you're getting several times less in quality and in craftsmanship. And I think you can see that uh, even just, in, this is just one example, but you can see that just right here. As you take this out of that groove, being careful to do so because of the problems mentioned before, you'll pull this out, you have this spring, and... Uh, you can get replacement springs for this already? What does that tell me? If they're already selling replacements, it doesn't give me great confidence in that spring. But I noticed when uh, buying the pin, that is already possible. Uh, when you then take this off, you have the same thing. You can turn this to the left and pull it. There is a notch there to keep this together. And you'll notice that I have a cartridge. It does come with this converter, not uh, the worst converter, but not the best at all. It's a pretty cheap converter, uh, but it comes with that converter. I didn't use it because the seller that I purchased mine from included 20 of these black cartridges, and I thought, ah, why use my ink? <laughs> I'm just gonna use the included ink in trying out this pen. It is a simple black ink cartridge. I think that the cartridge is at the risk of making a mess. I believe that that is one of those 3.4 millimeter, kind of a wider mouthed cartridge that is common in the Chinese market, but I can't tell you for certain because my caliper, uh, the battery in my calipers it was dead today, so I'm out of luck there. No shroud, I noticed, around here at all, and I know there's not a lot of room to work with, but there's no protective shroud around that, so, you know, be careful, because that means that you could accidentally, whoops, you could accidentally bust that. Where did that notch go? The loss of the notch, that would be user error, right? Okay, so hopefully, overall, I had that. That goes back into this notch, that notch for that groove, this notch for this one, and then the fun starts. You put the spring in, and then try not to push too far. And you will notice that there is way too much wiggle room here, and that's part of the problem. Uh, this is such flimsy metal that it doesn't uh, come as close to this as it should. It just flares where it shouldn't flare. So you're gonna have to be careful and really watch what you're doing. Don't push too hard at this point because there's a little resistance. Put that there and then back up. And did you see what happened? Yeah, it didn't hold it. See the problem? I'm so glad I did that on camera so that you would know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna hold that in place and see if I can just, I don't think I can. Let's see, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Hold it in place with the knock. You do not have to do any of that with the Platinum. Okay, now it is back in. 
Sorry if that was off camera. It is back in and it is working. Okay, a little hard to deal with a couple of those idiosyncrasies of this pen. It's just the difference in quality. That's all it is. It's the difference in the quality uh, of the pen. So that nib, again, steel fine nib, also available in an extra fine. And uh, problems with the pen I've had have been uh, with that assembly and disassembly due to bad tolerances and uh, material quality issues. When you get it all put together, you know, it looks okay. Um, you can see through this one to see where some of the corners were cut, but it it, it looks okay. Uh, this is loose. Notice how loose that is. That is not true of the Platinum Curados. There's just the barely slightest movement. This is quite loose. If you had the converter in here, by the way, you would see the fill handle of the uh, converter inside that knock. That's neither a plus or a minus, just letting you know. Uh, but with the uh, the cartridge in there instead, you don't get that. Again, it does uh, operate, just not as smoothly. And that little door does not always, it seems okay right now, but uh, when I first got it, before I had disassembled it, it would be about that far open all the time. And of course that caused dry out issues. That seems to have gone away. Uh, I don't even think it was the disassembly and reassembly. I think that's gone away with use. I think something in there uh, smoothed out at least enough that that does work correctly now. I do wonder on durability because of the material differences and this especially, the door mechanism right there just seems very thin and uh, flimsy uh, in ways that the Curidasa's little door does not. So copied, but not copied to a fault, right? Uh, well, copied to a fault, not copied well to a fault. Now let's look at a writing test of this pen. Okay, so I'm going to show you the uh, Platinum Curados first. And this won't be apples to apples because this is a medium pen. and a different ink. So this is medium. This is, uh, what do I have in this pen? This would be Waterman. And this is Mysterious Blue. I'm just gonna abbreviate because really, that's just to give you kind of a point of reference of comparison. So let me skew that up just a little bit and find that other pin. So this is a fine, both of them of course are steel. This is the Lambito, Lambito three, oh, this is eight. I said three and was about to write eight. Three zero eighty eight, and this is just an included black cartridge. And this, okay, so I've been fairly negative, for which I do not apologize in this particular review. However, uh, when it comes to the actual writing, you know, the nib's okay. I, I, I hear that Lanbatu nibs are generally hit and miss. The few that I've had, actually I should say several, the several that I've had, the nibs are fine. Uh, I have not had the, uh, the miss ones just yet. As I said, this is a fine, and to my Western eyes, I would say, and, and generally, you know, Chinese nibs are closer to a lot of Western nibs in their thickness than to, say, Japanese. Uh, it just is almost a, uh, an extra fine. So I'm going to say a fine to extra fine. You do hear a little bit. Let me be quiet. Some of that noise is magnified because I'm having to hold my pad kind of on the leg of the camera stand to be able to move that paper up to compare the two. Um, so it's got a little bit of echo, but you can hear that. It's not the smoothest in the world, but it's, it's really not the worst. It actually writes okay. Uh, the ergonomics are the same as the Platinum Curados, so they are uh, what they are. You either like them 
or you don't. But in terms of the actual job of a pin, okay, I'm not going to... I'm not going to razz them that much on this. That's okay. Now, where there is a negative in this regard is that, yes, uh, that does not always seal as well as it should. Uh, I've had this pen. I, I actually I you know would write down uh, Lambito 388 at uh, or 3088, one hour, uh, 12 hours, two days and just kind of looked at it over a period of a few days. Uh, didn't get past two days. Where the Curados, you absolutely can. I, I've, I've ignored it for a couple of weeks and come back, and it's written first time every time. So the, the Curados does its job. This one, uh, not always. The other thing, you might can, can you see this? I'm not sure. Uh, let me back the camera up. There we go. Uh, do you see that that's not aligned correctly? Look at that. That is a really bad angle. It should go uh, parallel to those two marks in the uh, in the barrel, and it just does not. It is badly off. That's a quality control issue. Uh, I've tried turning it. Uh, it's just the way that all the parts interplay. Uh, if I try to fix that, I could tell I was going to break something and need to fix more than I aimed to fix. So uh, that then, of course, because you have kind of a fixed writing position with this pen, that knocks you off of what that position is supposed to be. And that it's kind of a problem. So when the, the pen goes to paper, uh, it's probably not quite as smooth as it ought to be because it's not the right angle, or you start trying to move your hand to correct it to you visually, and then this notch starts driving your finger nuts. With the real Curados, uh, that is aligned properly, and so you uh, you don't try to correct it and then end up messing up your grip. So there is that. But in terms of actually writing, to be honest, the nib is okay. Uh, the nib in a pen that didn't dry out would probably be even better. Uh, I think just a little bit of work on some micro mesh, and I would really like this nib. I actually, to be honest, I really like the line that you see there. Uh, it's just a, let me move the paper over. It's just writes a nice line. It's fairly dry, not crazy wet, uh, and it, it does. It, it draws a nice line. I have no complaints on that part. All of my complaints, frankly, really come down to this. Lanvitu. You dialed it in. You, you, you robbed the design entirely, and, and you didn't give us anything improved. You didn't give us a variation on a theme. You didn't even really give us an homage where you're showing respect to the company that designed your pen for you and that you, you you grab the design of. And for that reason, I would tell people just skip it. Just skip it. You really, really want that design, go ahead and, and save up for the real thing. Uh, in this case, it's not just worth the difference. Uh, I think it's I think it's worth sending the message to Lambda 2 not to pull that again. Okay, that's my review for, for whatever you think of that. Uh, God bless you. Have a great week. And I'll see, I'll see you later in just a few days with a real review of the Curados, uh, the real review of the real pen. Until then, again, God bless you and have a great week.